Nish here, and today we're going to answer the question, is this Biora SI40 steam vaporizer worth your money? Now I bought this to help with my voice, I've been having some issues and steam inhalation is meant to help with that, but you can also use a device like this for your sinuses or potentially even skin. Full disclosure, I'm not a doctor or anything like that, so nothing in this video constitutes advice. I'm just going to talk about how this thing works, my experience using it, and I'll also compare it to the old saucepan full of boiling water technique. Taking a look at the device, we can see that it's reasonably compact. It's made of a plastic construction, which is a little cheap, but it feels, you know, roughly solidly made. Firstly, there's this top assembly, which is released with this catch here. It's a very simple, just piece of plastic that basically roots the steam coming out. At the end, you've got this latex thing that you can rest your face on and there's space for your nose to go on. Then we can look at where the water goes. Now there's two containers in here for water, which confused me initially. I had to read the instructions quite a few times. So firstly, in this chamber, which is locked quite securely, this is the water that's going to be evaporated and turned into gaseous water, gas. That water then gets propelled through this tiny nozzle, which you can see here, and it draws up water that's in the tank below here. Now this is the, what they call the aroma tank, and you fill up this side, and when it gets used, it gets returned into the other side. Now, what is happening here, I believe, is this gaseous water is coming out at a really high temperature and pressure, and it's drawing out the liquid that's in here and instantly vaporizing it, or nebulizing it is the scientific term. In this compartment, you can either put normal water or saline, or you can use essential oils. Now, it's not something I'm interested in or know a lot about. I can't advise about that, but you can look up. It is an option in this device. You shouldn't put anything other than water in here, though. But in both cases, the water should be sterile and ideally distilled. If it's not distilled, it's going to leave mineral residues in here. You can see I've got a little bit. I have to keep wiping this to make sure they get you know, wiped away. The device is mains powered, so the cable isn't particularly long, to be honest. It's only about a meter long, so you might need an extension to get it into the place you need. And the last thing to show you is on here, there's this plastic little nozzle thing that goes back and forth in two positions. What this does is control the size of the steam particles you're getting. It makes a minor difference, but nothing too significant in my experience. Before we move on to my thoughts, I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. It's a long way to a thousand subscribers and every click counts. So using this thing is pretty straightforward. First, you need to fill both the tanks I mentioned. The main heating tank only takes a small amount of water, about 25 milliliters, while you then also need to fill in the aroma tank with about 50 milliliters of water. In order to keep things sterile, I boil a full kettle of water and store it in this clean glass bottle, and I use this water in both cases. This isn't a 100% perfect solution. You could potentially use distilled water to avoid residues as well, but for me it's like the simple solution because I'm quite lazy. <laughs> Once the device is assembled, you can then plug it in and flick the switch to turn it on. It takes about two minutes for the steam to start being generated, and that will last anywhere from eight to 10 minutes in my experience. Ideally, you wanna have a good posture to make sure your airways stay open. I find there's plenty of steam coming out of here. Apparently it's at 43 degrees, and I find if I get too close, it gets a bit too hot, but you can find a distance that suits you. Once the steam is finished, you need to turn the device off, take off the upper assembly and give that a wipe. The water that had been produced has been condensing into an output container, so you need to remove that aroma container and empty that out, but you need to wait for the device to cool down before you open that heating chamber because you've got highly pressurized boiling water in there, so it's, it's very much a case of being careful around that. Now, according to the instructions, you're meant to give this a thorough clean after every use and to be quite honest I am extremely lazy and maybe it's ill-advised but I don't give it a wash that often maybe once a week but it is hard to clean some of the other parts so I've been finding you know I need to reach in with a cloth in particular the whole unit you can't put away you can take off each piece and wash that but you can't submerge the unit so you need to kind of use a cloth in there if you're getting any residues like I am because I'm not using distilled water. So my experience using this device has been broadly good. It produces a large quantity of steam and in a constant stream, and I find it works quite well using it a couple times a day. As far as a couple of the minor negatives, as I said, cleaning it is a little bit awkward. A couple of the pieces are quite tricky to clean. Another thing is on the box, it quite clearly says super silent, super quiet. It's not super silent and super quiet. I mean, understandably so, because you're essentially boiling water and then expelling steam. But I don't know on what definition they say silent. It's, it's by no means loud, but it is by no means silent. I think it could potentially disturb someone in, who's very close to it if you're, I don't know, stealthily trying to do your steam inhalation. But yeah, just bear that in mind. 
Another thing I should raise is apparently in the design of this, where the tube attaches by plastic is quite fragile. So if you're meddling with that or maybe trying to remove the tube, then you need to be careful around that. There is a three year warranty though, so I hope they would, you know, replace it in the case of any damage that seems to be from the design. So what about that old large pan and boiling water technique where you have to fill up an entire kettle, boil that, put it in a large saucepan, get a towel and hunch over it and, and breathe in. There's a few ways where I think this device is worthwhile in what it improves over that technique. The first thing is being able to maintain an upright posture. This particularly will help the treatment be more effective because if you're hunched over, your airways are gonna be constricted in, the, in, in some sense. Second, you've got much more steam and much more consistently delivered steam throughout because obviously the boiling water you put in a pan is gonna cool down eventually. Whereas here, you've got a nice steady stream of steam all the way. So I think it makes it a more powerful treatment in that sense. It's also a lot more comfortable because you can move away if the steam is a bit too much for you. Whereas with the pan, you're trapped underneath this towel and if you let the heat escape, then the effectiveness is gonna reduce even further because your water is gonna cool down more. The last point is an interesting one and that's electricity use and energy use. If you're particularly environmentally conscious, maybe this will be interesting. This device is 150 watts and so it's gonna use that continuously over 10 minutes. Whereas if I have to boil a full kettle of water, which is 2.3 kilowatts, I've calculated that that uses about four to five times as much energy as you just using this device, which seems a bit crazy, but actually it makes sense because if you think about it in, in this device, you're only boiling the water that you need. You're vaporizing all of that water. Whereas in the kettle, you're heating up this large volume of water just to collect the steam that rises off the top of it. So there you go, you know, if you're feeling particularly environmentally conscious, then a device like this will be great. It's unfortunately not gonna pay itself back anytime soon though, because the amounts of energies associated with this are not particularly large, but you can go to the description for some calculations on the topic if you're interested. The last thing we have to talk about is other options you might want to consider. One thing I saw that I maybe should have bought instead of this is the Bura FS50. It looks a little bit simpler. It doesn't have this complicated chamber, double chamber technique. It instead just has a simple evaporation pan. And I think that would work just as well as this because it's evaporating that small amount of water and you're getting all the steam. That costs a few quid less as well. So that would be a good option. Of course, that doesn't support the nebulization of aromatic oils like this device does. But to be honest, I'm, I'm a bit sketchy over the whole yeah, if they're inhaling essential oils thing, I'd, I'd much rather just use steam. The other broad category of devices you might want to look into are nebulizers. Now these are actually designed for drug delivery to children because you can inhale drugs in a steam. Instead of producing steam though, they produce quite a cold vapor. So as a consequence, they're a lot less maybe harsh because they're not as hot and they're much easier to use continuously. The problem with them, they tend to be a bit more expensive and they're a bit more complicated because they have these complicated mesh filters that, that make the particles really small and so easier to inhale. And I think you have to generally be a lot more careful about how you're cleaning them and what you're using to supply them. But ultimately we can conclude and is this worth the money? Yes. Can I recommend this device? Yes. Along with the similar Bureau FS50 I recommended. I think there are benefits to this over the traditional saucepan technique. And I think if you want to steam your voice regularly, then it is worthwhile spending that 15, 20 pounds to have a device which is specialized for it. The only cons that come up, of course, are that there's a little bit more maintenance here. You're gonna need to commit to cleaning the device and being a bit more careful about the water you're putting in there. But I think it is worthwhile in what you're getting, which is more consistent steam and a better treatment. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was a useful video for you. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Subscribe for more to the point content and I'll catch you in the next one.